Um, I never heard Doug, but I've heard Mark a bunch of times. Um, Doug M. is from the first group in Amelia Island, Florida. I'd like to bring him up. Doug, come on up. Big crowd. Hi, everybody. My name is Doug. I'm an alcoholic. It's, it's absolutely a pleasure being here tonight. I, I found out that I was going to be speaking to you all, I think, uh, yesterday when I, was, uh, when I was sitting back there and they were going over the program, but uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, my wife and I, who's uh, back there, it's our anniversary coming up, and we, we thought of no other better way than to be with the Bernardsville group and with you all to come here and, uh, and to do a little fellowship. Um, my sobriety date is uh, February 1st, 1995, and the way I'm going to work this tonight is uh, I haven't done this in a while. I'm not, not to speak, and I do it every week, but um, the way that I'm about ready to present how I, uh, how I went through the steps. There's a before, and then there's an after. Um, what happened uh, February 1st, um, 1995, was that in January of 1995, alcohol testing came into my line of work. Um, if anybody is afraid of flying, you're going to hear some stories here tonight. You may not want to. Uh, you may want to leave right now. <clears throat> uh, I'm a retired airline captain from one of the... <laughs> yeah. So anyway, <laughs> retired. <laughs> I do look young. Um, I am young. I'm 46 years old. I got on with the airlines when I was 23 years old, um, which was unheard of back then. I graduated with an aerospace engineering degree, and the only reason I did that was because it's the only thing I was able to do drunk. Make sense? And so I picked a place. I'm from Patterson, New Jersey. I just went to Florida, and I went like this. And I was like, that looks good. I went down there, and I got into one of the top universities, and, um, and I did it. I, I really did. I did it drunk, and and all that other stuff. So what happened with me was that in 1995, in January, alcohol testing came in, thanks to the general public, of course. And uh, that was after that Northwest deal happened when everyone was flying drunk. And it's very easy to do, believe it or not. But what happened was um, in December, I could not figure out my schedule for January. I just, I couldn't figure it out because instead of, as we used to say, eight hours from bottle to throttle, it was 0. 0.0012. I mean, I had hangovers that were like DWIs of like 1.5s. You know what I mean? I mean, the hardest thing for me was getting to the airport in Washington. Like, yeah. And then once I got on the airplane, it was all cool because then you had a whole bunch of people around you and every autopilot and all that other stuff. But so, so what happened was I, I couldn't figure out January. So I said to myself this. I said, okay, I figure out the schedule. I get it. I get it. No more four-day trips. I'll try to do these things called out and backs or a couple-day trips, and, and maybe the shakes will get really bad. And, I mean, you know, <laughs> think about this, but there's not a problem here. Not a problem. So I, so I get the schedule. I figure it out. I'm ready to rock and roll. I, I start a trip out of Washington, on, and I, I'm living in Florida, so I commute. Now, that may sound crazy, but commuting for us is like driving for y'all. It's just the thing that we do in the airlines. And so um, uh, January 2nd, I, I start out of Washington, so I thought I'd have a calm me down cocktail on January 1st because I was just so hungover from New Year's Eve. Correct? Everybody following this story so far? Okay. So I have a toddy. What happens? What happens is my wife who's sitting back there is a non-alcoholic. So as it was told to me with this loony farm that I went to for airline pilots down in South Miami Beach, is that cool or what? Did we pick the place? Our union is powerful, let me tell you that. Explain it like this. There's a four-step process to alcoholism the way we go, right? We have five steps. She has four comes in as alcohol, turns into a thing called formaldehyde. You get the, woo, the body says, it's poison. She says, oh, you know, we. And she has this half a glass of wine thing, and she puts it down, and she moves forward, okay? Turns into barley and hops, sugar, and then it comes out as water, H2O, four-step process, not with us. Comes in as alcohol, turns into formaldehyde. We get this, whoa, and then we turn into emerald. 
bam, kick it up a notch. Right? If one is good, 20 is phenomenal. Then it turns into this codeine-like substance, which gives us the more, the more, the more, the more, the more. We're restless, irritable, and discontent until we could feel the sense of ease and comfort, which comes immediately from a drink. So let's go back to January 1st. I have one toddy. Okay? I wake up February. So this is what happened with me. So what happened was on the second, I was supposed to fly a four-day trip. I told you I wasn't going to do it. Right? But I had it all planned. I was going to call in sick on the last two days because the shakes were going to get so bad. I had this all figured out. So then all of a sudden I wake up and it's like the second. And I got to get on this flight to fly to Washington to fly this trip. I said, there's no way I'm going to pass this breathalyzer thing. So I call in sick. So it gives me four days off, of which is backed up with four days off. So now I got eight days off. And then seriously, I remember waking up February 1st. So I'm in this house in Florida. I wake up February 1st. And I'm like this. And I had no clue what day it was, but I, the clock was 325 in the afternoon. And I remember this very clearly because I started going in convulsions. There was feces and urine and bottles and, and, and puke everywhere, all over the house. And, um, or at least the room that I was in. And I turned over and I saw a note that was left from my first wife, uh, who I had two children with. And I, and I noticed the house was kind of quiet. And I looked at the note, and the note was dated three days prior to me reading it. They were gone. I didn't know. I had no idea. And it said, second paragraph, you turned out just like your father. My father died from cirrhosis of the liver. It's a very, very ugly death. I go in this convulsions. I'm an atheist at this time, and I scream, God, why have you forsaken me? I was always mellow, dramatic. Class clown, class talker, four years in a row. I'm very proud of that. And this peace came from the top of my head, and it went all the way down to my toes, like I've never felt in my entire life. And I raised up from the bed, and I, I don't mean I levitated. I mean, I, I sat up in bed, and um, it said, it's over, three times. My, it, it, cl it clouded out every other thought, this peace, it's over. And this number came into my head. This is a true story. I, I get up from the bed, and I start walking out to a telephone. I'm not shaking, nothing. I call up, and I hear Captain Appleby, blah, 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 airline, employee assistance program. I didn't even know we had one. How may I help you? And I'm like, God, God. Oh, what, 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 was, what, what, holy sh what was that? I call it again. I call it a third time. He goes, stop. He goes, you're making me dizzy. This is a private line. And I'm like, I, 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 I think I'm an alcoholic. I think I'm an alcoholic. I started January 2nd. I remember February 1st. <laughs> right? Maybe I'm going over the edge too much. I shouldn't have called. And um, with the airlines, it's like the CIA. When you, when you mentioned the alcoholic sign, uh, and this guy was the union, so I was protected. I didn't get caught. Okay, so they'll give me a chance. I didn't know that. He was down in Florida within hours. And he had me, and he looked at me, and he says it was uh, February 2nd. And he said, um, you may never fly an airplane again if you continue on like this. He says, if we surrender, and this, you got to understand, folks, this is all I ever was. This is me, Doug the pilot. I was never known as Doug M. I was not, just Doug the pilot, all right? It was who I, who I was. I was so far removed from where I am today, and I can't wait to tell you where I am today. So I said, okay, get out, get out, get out. You know, my lawyer will beat your lawyer if you tell anybody, blah, 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 you know, whatever. And he turned around, he said to me, you never have to live life like this again, ever. And I thought the angels were singing. I don't have to abuse my wife. I don't have to abuse my children. I don't have to abuse myself. I, I couldn't believe it. And I said, let's do it. That started my whole life. I went to a 28-day program where they sent drunken airline pilots down to South Miami Beach. Um, they loved me so much, they kept me in for 72. <laughs> Man, I, I tell you what, I was hurting. I was hurting real bad. And... Um, uh, as I walk into my room, this guy goes, get to your knees. I said, nah, you don't understand. I don't believe in that. And, and he goes, oh, oh, okay. That's cool. That's cool. He says, do me a favor. Pack up and get to the elevator. I'm like, why? He goes, well, you're out. And I'm like, well, well, why is everyone trying to throw me out of this place? Hold on a second. If I don't graduate, and I said that, <laughs> if I don't graduate, I won't even be able to fly a kite. So the guy goes, get to your knees. So I get to my knees, and he, he says, I want you to say a prayer. And, and I said a prayer. I said, thank you, you blah, 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 effing mother. And I went off on this God thing. 
And he looked, he goes, good, good, that's a start. And he walked out of the room. So I'm like, hey, where are all the pilots? They got me in with these heroin addicts, these drugs. I don't know, squat about drugs. They got me in with these drug addicts and everything. And, and they were just, they, they saw me come walking in the door. They must have. And they were going to break this ego. And they did. It took 72 days, but they did it. So it says here, what happened was I got out of the, um, the funny farm and I went back to Amelia Island and um, I learned one thing. For $250,000, 72 days, of which was not my money, um, I, went, uh, I went to a meeting and I learned that I had to get a sponsor. That's what I learned, okay? So I, um, I looked around and I didn't like you all and I said, oh, whatever. You know, I, I could do this for two years because I was planning on going out. So this is what I heard. You ready? This is what I heard. Don't drink, go to meetings. All right? I guess I could do that. I have no job. So I, I, I could do that. So I was doing four meetings uh, a day. I was doing institutions. I was doing these guys were just like dragging me, these old timers all over the place. And, oh, it was driving me crazy. They wouldn't leave me alone. So uh, I went all over the place. 90-day chip. I'm about ready to pick up my 90-day trip, and what's happening to my insides? I'm, a re I'm the real deal. I'm dying inside. I'm not drinking. I'm going to meetings, and I'm working a selfish program. That's what I heard. It's a selfish program. I'm like, sign me up. <laughs> my then wife is saying to me, I ain't going to stay home. This is a selfish program, and I'm going <laughs> to... And then I kind of connected with this guy that says, take your time, laddie. Call me laddie. Take your time. You don't have to work the steps. That step thing. Because I would carry this book to every meeting. I don't know why. <laughs> don't know what was in it. Read it once. The guy, Bill, was a loser. Had, I didn't like it. <laughs> I love these guys. The guy goes, here's the book. Read it. Tell me what you think. Well, I'm in a mental institution. <laughs> I read it in a day. He came back the next night. And I said, poorly written. Don't understand this guy, Bill. What a loser. I would have kicked his ass out a long time ago. Right? And he goes, well, read it till you understand it. Interesting. Okay. So then this is what I learned. It says, because this book is the basic text for our society. I'm going to ask you this question. I got a 737 flight manual home. I'm going to give it to you all. I'm going to say, go home and read this. Come back and see me. I'm going to put you in the left seat of that plane and say, let's spark it up, go to LA. You'll look at me like. <laughs> all right. It's a textbook. If I can fly, you can fly. It just needs to be taught. Am I right? It needs to be taught. This book needs to be taught. Okay? So what happened was, back to the 90 days, I'm picking up this little trinket, green, yellow, pink, I don't know what it was. They're giving me a trinket for not drinking. Thank you. I appreciate it. So I'm like, I'm going for the green. It was green. It was green. That's what it was. It was green. I said, I'm going for the green. I'm going for the green. And it was a Saturday, and I'm sitting there, and I'm waiting to pick it up. Because in Florida, there's this thing called Five Point Liquors, right? It's a drive through You don't have to get out of your car. The whole left side of my car is demolished because I was too drunk to get out. So I'd hit the building, hit the building, hit the building, and I pull up. Right? So all I'm thinking of, Five Point Slicker, Five Point Slicker, Five Point Slicker, Five Point Slicker. I, I can handle this. 90 days, I'm out. Um, why? Who wants to be an airline pilot anyway? Fly every other Tuesday and make all that money. I'm thinking this. I take one drink. I'm not flying a kite. Remember that. I had to do this for years. Think about this. You know, it's like 90 days. I'm, like, I'm not an alcoholic. They're a little off. I was, I, I'm, I'm missing the month of January 2005. If anyone finds it, come get me. Or 1995. So anyway, I'm going out. I'm, I pick up my green chip. And I'm walking out the door. And this guy, Greg H. From Hoboken, New Jersey. What is he doing on this island? He gets sober with all you guys, right? You guys, as he calls it. So he, he looked at me. He says, man, you're acting more weird than usual. He says, listen, uh, are you okay? <laughs> what did I say? Outstanding. <laughs> right, Pete? Outsta phenomenal is another word I would use. Phenomenal. Outstanding. Phenomenal. And he looks at me. He goes, okay. He goes, I'll tell you what we're going to do. He goes, um, you, um, I said, I, I don't get this. I don't get it. I, I, I hate myself. I hate this stuff. And I, I just, bleh, I hear you go, diarrhea all over your lap. No, you fix it, right? And he says, well, he says, if you work the program of recovery, he says, maybe you might get some relief. I'm like, what are you talking? Dude, you dragged my ass to all these jails and institutions. I'm going to four meetings a day. He goes, you're working a phenomenal fellowship. You're the mayor. 
He says, but you have not touched the program. I'm like, program, fellowship, whatever. All right? He starts me on this journey. He says this. Tuesdays and Thursdays, you will meet at my house at 8 o'clock. 8.01, don't even show up. You lie to me once, you're out. He says, you got that? I was like, you, I'll show you this won't work. All right? So now I'm atheist, and I'm on a mission. <laughs> An atheist on a mission is a badass thing. So I show, up at, I show up at his house. First thing he does is this. I'm going to the blackboard. I wanted to tell the tape that. Okay. Recovery, unity, and service. Okay, we have the triangle here. I thought it used to just look pretty around your neck. I almost bought one out there. I had no idea what it meant. Okay. Bill, although he was a phenomenal businessman, did not come up with this. He just TM'd it. He trademarked it. That's what he did. Okay. This is really a Buddhist thing. It means mind, body, and soul. Okay, mind, body, and soul. When all three are connected, you're in perfect harmony with the universe. Make sense? Mind, body, and soul. Bill said recovery, unity, and service. Recovery being the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous. And I'll show you how I do that on a daily basis. Unity means the meetings. I try to do a minimum of those a week. And service work means AA. And I started three groups. One in Charlottesville, Virginia called the first 100 group. The next one was in Sarasota called the first 100 group. And Amelia Island, which is called the first 100 group. So, so that's what I do. He promised me I would be safe and protected in the universe if I worked this on a weekly basis. I said, well, what do you mean by that? He says, if you work the steps daily, and I'll show you how I do that through this, which I've come up with, and I do daily inventory. To this day, almost 13 years later, I still do daily inventory. My wife showed up on a resentment last night. First, <laughs> <laughs> She's back the first time, and she goes, good, good. You owe me an amends. <laughs> Al-Anon black belt. <laughs> okay, recovery service unity. All right? So I did a minimum, and I take people through the steps every Saturday. If it's more than five, I bring them to my office, and we bring them into the conference room, and I bring them through. We break up into individual places. I know how to take people through the steps in four hours, just like Dr. Bob used to do. Okay? I do that every Saturday, then I do two meetings. All right? The 12 steps, I do daily inventory through the sheet back here, which is actually through the 11th step, which we will discuss. If my fingers can get to it, I'll show it to you. And then I run the, the AA group, the service group, all right? So what happened was this. So I'm sitting at this guy's house. He says, we have Alcoholics Anonymous are more than 100 men and women who have recovered. Peter went over that. From a seemingly hopeless state of mining, the mind obsession and body, the body craving, to show other alcoholics precisely, exactly how we have recovered is the main purpose of this book. I thought about this, and I was like, this is like a checklist, right? Not being very bright, being a self-proclaimed rocket scientist by degree, but not being very bright. I said, I could do checklists. I'm good at checklists, right? I'm good at checklists. And so precisely how we have recovered is the main purpose of this book. I said, I could do that. So what he did is he read through that. He read through those pages. We highlighted and outlined specifics. And now it started becoming clear to me. I'm like, oh, I get it. Is that what that meant? Oh, I get it. It's a textbook. He, needs, he needed to deliver this to me. And then what happened was we got to step one. We learned that we had to fully concede to our innermost selves that we were alcoholics. This is the first step in recovery. The delusion, which I had many of them, the delusion that we are like other people presently or maybe has to be smashed, not broken, smashed, completely destroyed. Admitted we were powerless over alcohol. When I put alcohol in my body, I got the phenomenon of craving. If you don't have that, you are not powerless out of alcohol. Please, if you like the fellowship, that's cool. Don't sponsor anybody. You're going to kill more people than smallpox. Why? Take your time. Take your time? I'm almost dead. I'm on 90 days. I'm giving up a career that I worked my whole life for. Okay? That was my thought pattern. So I've ran into, Chris said, I, I've ran into a few hard drinkers. And I said, no, no, no. you're out. You're, you're not allowed. I'm not going to teach you the handshake. My wife doesn't know our handshake. So I didn't teach him the handshake. Okay? That our lives have become unmanageable. You may have misplaced a car, a wallet. I misplaced an aircraft once. Lost it. I lost an airplane. I'll tell you that story later. Okay. So step one, I got it. I'm okay with that. All right. 
So then we start moving on, and we start moving on to step two. Okay? Step two. I'm atheist. Did I tell you that? I'm atheist. Okay? Came to be the power greater than self could restore us to sanity. Sanity about alcoholism. 72 days in a mental institution, walking across the street to have a toddy is not sane thinking. It's not that I'm insane. It's that my thoughts about alcohol is insane. So he said to me, he read this to me. He said, um, he said it right here. He said, when we came, became alcoholics crushed by self-imposed crisis, what do you mean? Everybody else hosed me. I didn't hose anybody. What are you talking about? We could not postpone or evade. We had to fearlessly face the pro- proposition that God is either everything or he's nothing. Either he is or he isn't. He looked me straight in the eye and goes, what's your choice? Uh, that's easy. He's nothing. He says, okay, you're hosed. I'm like, hosed? Why does everybody, I'm hosed. I'm getting thrown out of AA now. He goes, no, 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 no. If you don't get it, your, your, your chances are less than less than average. It's not even less than average. You're hosed. I said, well, what do I do? What do I do about this? I really didn't want to drink again. I really, I really didn't want to drink again. He says, okay, can you come to believe that the rooms have restored you to sanity? You got 93 days. I'm like, yeah, I, I never thought of that. Yeah, I could do that. Okay. And so then what do we do? We move forward. Okay. Step two today in my life is everything. Everything. My thinking is dead spot on. And I'll explain some things that have happened in my life. Dead spot on. If you want to try something, when we get to the 11th step, I'll, I'll explain in a little detail. With your mate, try to pray and meditate. Wait till you see the level that you will get to. On a daily basis, of course. As long as you don't know her amends in the next day like I did. All right. Then we got to this thing called step three. Being convinced we are at step three. So what did he do? He went back to page 59. He read steps one and two. I said, I don't believe in God. He's like, well, you're stubborn. That's good. I believed in number one, step three. Okay, so, so it says, being convinced we are at step three. And step three states that made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood him. I said, no, I, I, I don't believe in that. And, and, and he got on his knees because you all used to do that in the beginning, in the first 100, and to go up to Dr. Bob's room, and he got on their knees. And I'm like, get up off the, you're embarrassing me. Get up. <laughs> My wife's, I'm, I'm like this. My wife's, I'm, you know, this is a guy who's pooping all over himself, and I'm embarrassed with a guy on his knees. So he says this third step prayer. He says, will you make a decision right now to finish the rest of the steps with me? This guy was good. He's from Hoboken. He's a Jersey guy. No offense to the New York people. He probably would have been great in New York. I said, yeah, yeah, I could do that. I could do that, okay? I make a conscious decision every morning I wake up uh, my wife and I read um, all the non-denominational prayers of the big book. I have a whole list of them right here. And she reads them all. She's from Rome, Italy. That's the only thing I got out of the airlines. I picked her up on one of my flights. <laughs> Back then, you were allowed to have people up in the flight deck, and she was going to Rome, and I was the captain. And I was like, well, I just found my ex-wife, my next ex-wife, joking into the flight attendant. And she threw her up front, and I said, this plane's not moving until you give me your number, and she left. I don't know if she understood English back then, but uh, I thought it was a good pickup line. I met her three years later in Charlottesville, Virginia. I hear El Capitano. And I'm like, Miss Italy. She had this long Italian name. And, and we're, we've been attached at the hip ever since. I do not love her. I adore her. We're celebrating our four-year anniversary tonight. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what, uh, that's what this has given me, okay? So step three. Then what happened was the infamous step four. And, and here we go. I love this one. Um, it says here, next, we launched. Now, I was, accepted, I was accepted into naval fighter pilot training, okay, when I got out of school. My roommate went to F-15s. I was going to go into the 16, and I was going to go fly for the military. Thank God I did it. Woo! Can you imagine me in the military? I'd still be in Sing Sing or wherever they got there. And so then I was talking to my friend Billy and my roommate, and I said, what is it like to be launched? You know? He says, you're going from zero to 60 in a matter of feet. You're like this. Okay? So I love these. Where'd they come up with uh, a step a year? Next, we launched. That means, oh! Right? So my sponsor got up off his knees. He took out one of these forms. Uh, I turned to the sex one. Hey, honey, how do you like that one? 
He turns to one of these, anyway, he turns to one of these forums, and we start inventorying. Right there, right then, next we launched. Okay? Next we launched. How does this work today? When I fill out my 10-step, for an example, and I did. It was, it was totally my gig. I had a resentment against my wife. I wrote it down, um, and then I inventoried it under resentment. Went to my part. What was my part? I was an asshole. Bottom line. I, I wish I could sugarcoat that one, but you can't. Okay? I was a total asshole. So that's how I inventory stuff now. Daily, daily, folks, daily. I don't stop. I don't stop. And I got a life. I'm going to cuss. My life is so good. I think I shit a rainbow this morning. That's how good it is. All right. And, it, and it's all from this program. It's all from doing the right thing. Now, the fifth step. I had the thing. I call it the thing. We all have the thing. Come on. I'm not the only idiot up here that's admitting it. I had the thing. The thing that I'm going to take to my grave, as Pete and Chris talked about. I was taken. It was a thing that happened in Knoxville, Tennessee. It was a terrible thing that happened with another female. Terrible. Terrible. And so what I did is um, he, um, he went right here. He says, I just want to read something to you before you start this. I had 22 pages. Fourth column, zero. I had nothing. Everyone screwed me. Even that person in Tennessee hosed me, right? So he goes, I want to tell you why we're doing this. If we skip this vital step, we may not overcome drinking. Time after the time, newcomers have tried to keep to themselves certain facts. You're not, you're not holding anything back, right? <laughs> Do you know it does that nine times? Are you sure you're telling me everything? Have you left anything out? If you left anything out, you're going to drink. Nine times. All the way to page 74. And then at the end it says, you must be honest with someone. I was like, oh, it happened in 1990. And I told him the thing. And he looked at me. He goes, let me tell you something. And then he told me his thing. I'm like, oh, my God, you're sick. <laughs> A priest wouldn't have done that. <laughs> That's why I sought him out. Okay? Do you follow me so far? So the thing is out. I go home, I do the hour break. Okay, I got ADD, 15 seconds, but it felt like it three hours. <laughs> so I go home and I, and I, I do, I sit and, and I think to myself, oh my God, I can't believe I told this guy my thing. And uh, I did, I told him the thing and I went home and I sat in quiet contemplation. And, um, I didn't do the hour, I gotta admit to you. And um, I felt a part of you for the first time ever. I felt a part of you. I didn't believe in God, but I felt a part of you. We got together. We went over the sixth and seventh step. We went over every character defect known to man, and I was 62 of them. Okay? I don't like calling them defects because I don't believe God makes junk. It's things that I would rather not have in my life. We got to our knees on the seventh, of which I joined him. I joined him on the knees, and we did the seventh step prayer. We went right into inventory. And back then, I wasn't writing cards as I have on here. On, on my sheets. I, I, I didn't have cards back then until I did like the third inventory. Now, being an airline pilot, I can make direct demands anywhere for free. <laughs> yeah. By this time, the airline had called me back. I got all my licenses back. They upgraded me to captain. And then I'm based out of Washington. So I get this other big book thumpers. You all kept on coming into my life, pain in the asses. So, so the guy goes, okay, we'll, we'll go through eight. I write the list. I know you're not going to believe this. I was a, a liar, a cheat, and a thief. Literally. I used to steal to, for, you know, alcohol. And so um, I, um, I had to make uh, a couple big amends. One was to the whole neighborhood who I used to steal from. So I'd fly to New Jersey. Hi, Mr. Sullivan. Little Dougie. How are you? Oh, Dougie makes good. And before you know it, after I tell her the amends, I used to break into the top window and steal from Mrs. Sullivan. She's like, oh. And I'm coming up there. She's going like this. I can't believe you broke into my house. And I'm like, oh, my God, these guys in AA are nuts. I'm not doing this ever again. <laughs> so I call up the sponsor. I just did tell him. He goes, go do his Nardi. Go do Bronstein's next. Go do. I'm like, no. <laughs> Hi, Mrs. Isnardi. Little doggy. I swear to God, that lasted for two days. But this was the thing. I had, I always, <laughs> I don't know why I did this. I wore a suit and tie to my amends. What was that all about? <laughs> so I wore a suit and tie to these amends. 
Hi, Mrs. Swihart. Dougie. Yeah, I know. Good little Dougie. Let me tell you what I did with your daughter, and then I'm going to tell you what I did. All right? So I make all these amends. I fly back to Virginia, and I'm screaming and raving. And they're like, okay, so I understand. Uh, yeah, I understand. And then when I was done, they were like, okay, so what are you doing next week? We got your schedule here. You're free. Okay, I'm going to Minneapolis. I got to see this girl, Lisa. You know? and, and anyway, I, so I was doing this. I was doing it. Every week I was doing it. My last one uh, was amends to um, – the uh, state of New Jersey. The state of New Jersey. <laughs> but let me tell you what I did before that. The girl Tennessee thing. I didn't know who she was. It was a, it was a bad incident. But it, where I was in Washington, there was a White House who took care of battered women. And so I went up there and I volunteered. And for six months I volunteered. I kept a low profile. No one knew me. Except, and this is how free I am. And Chris knows this. He's been there. I own the largest nightclub restaurant in Charlottesville, Virginia. That's how free I am. I own a Nightclub, 40 different types of beers. You've got to see this place. It rocks. It really does. Two stories. It's huge. It's a train station. So um, what happened was I got on TV a few times, and after about six months, I walked in. She pulled me into her office. She says, you're that guy with the obnoxious commercial. It is obnoxious. Um, I'm like, yeah, it's, it's me. She goes, what are you doing here? And, I, and I, I told her the story. And she looked at me, and she says, we forgive you. We forgive you. I mean, I just that still chokes me up today. So that was done. <clears throat> now I have state of New Jersey. So I, I fly up, <laughs> I fly up to New Jersey. I call up my airline. I talk to this chief pilot. I say, "Hey, this is Captain Muir. I'm going to go do some jail time." The guy goes, "Who is this? That's this guy that you put to rehab for 250 G's." Oh, oh, yeah, Captain, how are you? And so anyway, he goes, you're going to do jail time. And I told him the story. He goes, ah, whatever you need to do, whatever you need to do. So I took care of that. And then what happened was um, I talked to my family because I had child support. I had, uh, oh, my one-year anniversary, my wife wanted a divorce. <laughs> one year to the day. God bless her, she waited. And then she wanted a divorce. So uh, you can imagine the amounts of child support and alimony I was paying, which is fine. I was blessed that I was able to pay it. So, um... I call her up. I said, Alimony Child Support's going to stop. She's been behind me. We're very close. And uh, my mother says, no, 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 no. We'll pay for it, my sisters. I told my sisters what I was going to do. And they're like, what? Why are you doing this? I'm like, no, oh, supposedly it's going to keep me sober forever. I, <laughs> supposedly. <laughs> These guys are nuts. You tell me not to go. I'm going to watch the family name. <laughs> I thought I had an out, right? I don't want to hurt anybody. I don't want to harm you. And they said, it's going to keep you sober forever. But we're in. We're in, like the Three Stooges. We're in. I'm like, so I go. I go to the state troopers, in New Jersey. My mom drops me off. Got my little bag. I walk in. I'm here. So who are you? Yeah, I'm looking for the wadded signs. You know what I mean? I've been thinking about you for 15 years. You don't know who I am. Oh, oh Douglas, how you been? I haven't seen you in a while. He comes behind the deck, click, click, and I walk away. Whoa. Right? So I sit in this room, and it seemed like hours, but I got ADD. It could have been 30 seconds. <laughs> and, this, and, this, and this young guy, my age, I was 32 then, comes walking in attorney. He goes, you have any idea how much work you have just cost me? And I'm like, uh, I'm sorry? I got handcuffs on. What do you mean? He goes, why are you doing this? I'm looking at your... You're a great citizen. And I said, I have to clean this up. I, I got to clean this up. You're it. You're the last. You're the finish. You're the final. You're the done. I'm done. I finished my amends, people. You have to do this, and I'll tell you why, which actually turned into be one of my most embarrassing moments. So <laughs> he comes out with this paper. He comes out with this paper. Contract. Sign that. May I look? And I'm looking, and I'm looking, and I see this number, and I'm like, and what does it say in the big book? Nice step. Lengths, any, lengths. any lengths, and we make the best deal we can. I said, this is what I would like to do. I'd like to start off at $500 a month. I'll do that for six months. And then I'll come up to it. He looked at me like, are you, you're in handcuffs. Are you making a deal? <laughs> right? I said, yeah, I'm being realistic. I made my last payment to them in uh, 2002, June 2nd. So... 
what I did was the guy goes, uh, he rewrites the contract, and he puts in all this language, and I read it, and I sign it, and now I'm standing outside. I- I'm, I'm outside. I'm like, holy, the jail's behind me. They let me go. I had to go back in. I didn't have a cell phone. I walk back in. I call up my mom. I'm like, I'm outside. Well, actually, I'm inside, but, and I was a babbling idiot because I'm like, you know. And so she comes back to me. She goes, what happened? I said, I don't know. Get me to the airport. She gets me to the airport. Now, on Union Airlines, we could fly this thing called Jump Seat on other Union Airlines for free. So they had a nonstop from Newark. I was running on uh, United, so you know I don't fly for United. So United's good. The stock's going to stay high. So I say, uh, I, I go to the flight deck. Hi, how you doing? We have this little nod, shake hand, you know. <laughs> and then the door closes. He goes, sit in first class. They, they always do. I did it. Sit in first class. So I'm sitting in first class, and this, I'm atheist. Did I tell you that? This overwhelming, this overwhelming God consciousness came to me. I had no more fear. I was equal with the universe. I was done. I mean, I, you have no idea what that feeling is until you feel it. I was done. And I just started bawling. And I'm crying. And I'm crying. And the lady next to me is like, are you okay? And she's bad. The flight attendant comes and goes, what are you doing? She goes to the flight deck. That captain's a... And I'm like, I want God. <laughs> and she's like, he's saying he wants God. And the, and the captain's coming out. Are you all right? And... True story. One of my most embarrassing moments. Okay. And I've done a lot of embarrassing things. I want God. So anyway... I went on this huge five-year God thing. I was reading everything. I was a sponge. So you know those people who knock on your door? They come in. Uh, not Harry Krishna as the Jehovah Witnesses. I'd invite them in with open arms. <laughs> Two and a half hour later, they would be like, can we go? <laughs> True story. I- I'd be like this with the Bible. And then I'd look at their Bible. I'm like, whoa, that's ballsy. You changed the wording. And be like, let's get another coffee. <laughs> this step changed my life. How many people, how many people have heard, um, I got two minutes. How many people have heard, I worked the steps daily in my life. I worked the, well, whatever. So, because um, I'd walk up to him and I'd be like, Oh, how do you do it? Well, I, I, I think, think, think. Uh, I, I don't drink and go to meetings. I, and they give me all these cliches. And I'm like, God, okay, I got nothing out of that one. All right? This is it. This thought brings us to step 10, which suggests we continue to take personal inventory. Step four. And continue to set right any new mistakes. That's step 10. As we go along, we vigorously commence this way of living as we clean up the past. So as I'm doing step nine... I'm doing step 10. We have entered the world of the spirit. Our next function is to grow in understanding and effectiveness. This is not an overnight matter, and it should continue for a lifetime. I still fill out this form. Okay. I still fill out this form. Was I resentful? Was I selfish? Was I dishonest? Do I owe an apology? It all comes from 86, 85 in the big book. Okay? I still figure this out. I still do it. It keeps me so clear. I'm as clean as a whistle. I really am. It says here, continue to watch for selfishness, dishonesty, resentment, and fear. When these things crop up, we ask God to remove them at once. Step six and seven. We discuss with someone immediately. Step five, make amends quickly. Step nine, if we have harmed anyone, then we resolutely turn to someone we could help. Step 12, okay? Then I wake up in the morning. I sit in these two beautiful chairs that we have in our gorgeous home in Florida with my outstanding wife. She reads the 10 non-denominational prayers that we got right out of the big book because I love her accent. She reads that other fellowship, you know, the Alan on book, which is absolutely great. It really is. It's really great. I read the 24-hour book, and then we set the alarm for how much time we have. Saturdays and Sundays, open eye meditation could be... 30 minutes, an hour. Normally, it's 10, 15, 20 minutes. And it's be- why do I set that alarm? Because I have an ADD. I was like, 15 seconds. <laughs> Got a minute. You know what I mean? So I wasn't getting into anything. So I, I do set the alarm. We do that. Step 12. 
I live for helping you all. I live for bringing people over to my house. It's, it's funny. We've been very fortunate. I retired from, US, uh, from the airline I was at. From a U.S. airline that I used to fly for. In December, uh, December 2004, we started a company, invented a software. It went through the roof. We sold it to a, a huge uh, Wall Street firm and, um, and just did phenomenal. And we've been very blessed and very blessed. So we fly around and we do speeches um, through AA conventions and, 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 and we just, we got a, we got a great life. And so when you go to pick up, <laughs> when you go to pick up a, a wet drunk uh, in a Mercedes and they look at you like, what do you know? You know what I mean? I'm like, dude, I was just there. I mean, I was sleeping on the streets. I was laying in my vomit. I did all that, okay? My whole life is about helping you. My whole life, my whole life is. But it's not the whole life. Think about this. As I leave you, balance is everything. You have love, family, and everybody. You have work, one-third of our life, correct? And you have AA. When I hear somebody with 20 years going to 90 meetings a week and they can't walk down the beer aisle, there's something wrong with their spiritual conditioning. I love you all. Thank you.